Welcome to a Seeds of Wellbeing Voices from the Field podcast featuring voices of Hawaii agriculture producers for Hawaii agriculture producers. These podcasts are made possible by a grant from the University of Hawaii College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, also known as CTAR, and the Seeds of Wellbeing, or SO project, and is supported by a grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, National Institute of Food and Agriculture, and the Hawaii Department of Agriculture. Culture. Aloha, listeners. Welcome again to another episode of our Seeds of Wellbeing podcast. Today, I have the fortunate blessing to introduce you to Andrea and Matt. Andrea of Ancient Valley Growers from Kau. So, I'm going to uh, just let them share their own stories and how they became. Um, farmers in Hawaii and what they do. So, Andrea, let's start with you. Uh, thank you for inviting us. I'm uh, really happy to be here. So, I'm I, I'm originally from Mexico. I was born and raised there. Um, I personally didn't grow up like ranching or farming. My dad did. Uh, he uh, my. And my dad's side, they were like ranchers. And then I learned uh, recently from my grandma that we come from crazy chickens ladies, apparently. So, <laughs> crazy chicken ladies? What is that? <laughs> yeah, they just, uh, the ladies on that side of the family, they own like just over a hundred chickens uh, oh. on their mango trees. So they just like love their chickens. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I I went to college for engineering and I never saw myself like farming. Um, and I just I love it. And and so how long have you been farming now? For seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Okay. And and Matt, you were a chef before. Can you tell us a little bit how you got in into farming? Well, I Towards the, the the other half, the later half of my cooking career was spent in uh, farm to table restaurants. So I got to firsthand experience with the farmer chef relationship that really, after a while, really meant a lot to me. Um, yeah. One of the restaurants that I worked at before I moved to Hawaii, we would do <clears throat> um, farm tours with customers of the restaurant and the staff from the restaurant. So in doing that, that really kind of opened up that whole world to me. And I grew up around farms and ranches and never really thought much about it. Um, we always had a garden and I always loved growing like cacti and succulents. And um, I had my, my own garden right before I moved here, the biggest one I had ever done in my twenties um, and was introduced to a family that, that, still lived here in Hawaii in Kona and was invited by the dad of the family, became a family friend. Dad invited me over to just check out the farm. And, and I had been cooking for 11 years at that point. And I was kind of just burned out on it. The, the, the kitchen is, is stressful that, you know, you see it on TV and it's just, it's just like that. So um, I was ready for a change. Wasn't sure really why I was getting depressed because I love my job. I had three jobs, um, had an awesome dog, and I was starting to get depressed, and I couldn't figure out why, and I just knew something needed to change, and it wasn't until I took that leap and moved to Hawaii after being invited here that I realized I needed sun on my skin, and that's really what it was. Um, every other part of my life I loved, and and it just needed the sunlight, so I moved here specifically to learn how to farm um, and, and learned from the farmer that invited me. And then from there in South Kona, went to manage a farm here in Kau. And and we, I've been here for 10 years collectively now at this point. This month will be 10 years. Oh, happy anniversary. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And now, now, now we own a farm. We started our business, our Ancient Valley Growers LLC. Um, we're, we're doing really well. So what, what are you growing? We are growing a lot of root vegetables because we have deep soil here. Uh -huh. um, we do a lot. We're mostly known for the carrots that we do, rainbow carrots. Uh -huh. um, we have 
we have about 10 different vegetables that we'll do at any given time, but a lot of carrot and radish and cabbage. I was planting cabbage today. Zucchini. Zucchini. Cilantro. Yeah, cilantro, things that Andrea's familiar with. We want to be able to have that here. Mm -hmm. um, we plant a lot of lime trees. We're going to be starting to plant a lot of peppers once we get the greenhouses going. So mostly what we've been focusing on are things that we import. And we'd really like to just kind of bridge that gap. Um, just keep it simple, the simple foods. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what okay. what people want, you know, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, the basics. So, so rather how, than on a boat, it's grown here. Ah, so um, yeah. how do you... I'm assuming you're you're making revenue. You're you're net positive in terms of your revenue, then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because that's amazing. That's a challenge for a lot of uh, farmers, right, and growers in Hawaii. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Labor finding good labor or labor at all is is one of the biggest challenges. Um, and and you know we we still have a job outside of of just farming our own farm. And then that job is managing the Mamaki tea farm next door to us. Mm -hmm. So we have a regular paycheck that we get to help pay the bills. But um, I think if we were to go full time with the farming, we would we would be able to pay our bills. It would be a lot harder. Mm. Um, but every every, you know, every month, every year we get better at what we're doing and learn what to expect. And um we're we getting learn. We learn where we can we can fail right now and like learn from that and mm -hmm. just do it better. Because mm -hmm. we also have we also have like 150 chickens. Um, and then right now we're doing like a, around 100 meat birds per month. Um, and also we got our first cow. So we have two cows right now. Two cows. What do you do with the cows? What do you do? Well, milking. <laughs> <laughs> milk <laughs> yeah you have goat too you have goat milk as well we have one goat but she's retired she's retired yeah oh okay so it sounds like you guys are really happy um doing what you do what what contributes to that being outside S the sunlight and the mm -hmm. fresh air is important for happiness one of the biggest things that everybody needs to know and and people are learning since the beginning of COVID is we need to eat right. So because we milk our own cow and make our own butter and we eat animal organ meat and vegetables from the farm and we're we're like 85% food from Hawaii at least. And a lot of it now comes from our farm. Mm. That when you switch to a diet like that, it, you're gonna be happy. Like I guarantee it. So the happiness aspect, it's a lot of it has to do with your diet. And also we have like really good crew. And yeah. that's really important that we have like people that we can rely. Uh, my dad, for example, I know that if I leave, he got the animals or like uh, we have our farm manager, Audrey, like if we ask her like, hey, we need to like run this like uh, irrigation, can you do it? Or like teeth and like on the construction side. Mm -hmm. So we have a really good crew. And how many do you have? How many is your crew? Right now it's one, two, five. It fluctuates yeah. because we do the work trade program. Okay. Um, so yeah, between like five and seven. Yeah. Sometime like, it, you know, right now it it is a bit of a skeleton crew because it's the holidays and people are going home and yeah and which is you know extra rough because every year this is the busiest time of year for us because people need their green beans we do a lot of green beans oh yeah the Thanksgiving holidays. Is crazy. that's a back-breaking crop <laughs> um, and yeah and carrots and things like that they need the holiday veggies so oh uh, but it sounds like you also be able to get your breaks and holidays because you you have people you can rely on. So then you can take a break from your farm if you need to. Yeah, but oh, we, we love it. We like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't mind it. Yeah. We, we were we just like talking about here. that, though. We need to go get in the water. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to the beach. Yeah. So you do but, take a break. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> oh yeah not as not very often but i don't know i guess it's all relative like if you love what you're doing then like i took a break on sunday i say that i took a break on sunday because i was trying to do things but nothing was working out and it was just a sign like hey dude you should be going slow today and we watch a movie so we watched a movie. yeah yeah. <laughs> I didn't fall asleep uh, like 15 minutes <laughs> in. So, you know, like they're saying now, if you, if you own a farm, you have to know how to do everything. Because so you've got your crew, but then you need to do the books. Who does the bookkeeping, the finances? <laughs> Not <laughs> me. <laughs> the only reason we're here is because of Andrea's. So tell me what you do, Andrea's. And so what is your role? I, I send invoices to our customers and make sure that uh, we get paid. Um, we reconciliate our like receipts with our QuickBooks. QuickBooks is amazing. And I'm glad that it's so much like YouTube on that. That's where I learned. <laughs> on YouTube, also, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. <laughs> but also I learned how to butcher a chicken like, from YouTube. So I think yeah. everything is possible. A lot of people are on YouTube. Right. YouTube University. Right. Uh -huh. And also I have a I have a what is it called? A CPA in Kona. So they are like amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So every year I just like go with him and then but like every other aspect of owning and running a business, Andrea does it. Like anything she'll need outside or if something's broken, I can do that. But like when it comes to computers, uh -huh. it's changed so much since I was a teenager that I I don't even want to try to start learning because it's just, I everybody just needs to recognize their strong suit and that's not mine. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys blend very well together then. You compliment Yeah. Each other. Yeah, I mean, Andrea can still do all the same things I can do. I just can't do what she does. So yeah. she'll drive a tractor and run a chainsaw and lasso a cow. <laughs> and you can't do that. <laughs> I, just, I wouldn't be productive if I were in here. I, I'm starting to kind of, because, you know, it is important for if she's sick, which rarely happens because we have such a good diet. Um <laughs> then she needs someone to help in the office and I I should know how to do that. So Yeah, I think you can do it. It's just like, you know, you want to be outside. I do want to, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for what what sort of word, words of wisdom would you have to somebody who's wanting to do what you're doing? They're saying, "Wow, they're so happy. They get to do their own business. They're out getting sun they eat their own food i want to do the same thing what would you say to them is there any, this is your 10th year matt and your seventh mm -hmm. doing this yeah um was there a point where you wanted to quit but you kept at it or was it always oh, yeah. been easy peasy yeah no it definitely was like in in the process it took to buy the farm that we own now that there was a there was a point where we were both really down about it. I was ready to quit. Andrea kept us on the path. Um, it was really like Andrea's resolve because she's very stubborn. She's like, we're getting this farm. <laughs> and so what we would say is that if you if you feel like you can't do it, you just have to keep trying. There's always a way, even when it seems like there's not a way to make something work. There, we were sure of it that we weren't going to get this farm because of the, the just all of the different things we went through in in the process of buying the farm. <clears throat> we're like, this is there's no way around this. There still was, and we got the farm. So yeah, I mean, don't give up it. And it kind of all stems back to the diet. Like it, you're not going to be able to use your brain if you aren't eating well. And and it it's not as expensive as everyone thinks it is to eat well. Um, CSAs in Hawaii, at least, are very affordable from what I've seen compared to like just processed food in the store. It's oftentimes cheaper to to buy from a CSA. You're going to feel you're better farmers. and you're supporting farmers. But when, when your brain is firing on all cylinders because of your good diet, then you're going to be able to, to roll with the punches. And, and when you try to buy land or if you want to farm, there's going to be a lot of punches, but 
if you have a good diet, I feel like that that kind of um, the difficulties that you run into, the hurdles are are like kind of ex they become exciting. They're like <clears throat> it's like you like that challenge because um, otherwise it's just kind of I don't know. Life can be boring unless you're challenging yourself. Mm, okay. Yeah, and also with visual, I remember that we took a picture, like a like a drone picture, and then we put it on the fridge, and we were like, we're almost there, don't give up. Yeah, I remember, I remember that part. Good, yeah, oh, good point. Okay. Yeah, like visualization. Oh. So I took so a picture. Of yeah, so when you're around other farmers, do you see their diet? Do you notice it? Are they eating well? Are they eating the food they're growing, or are they... Mm. Well, here, yeah, yeah. Here Hawaii, yeah. At least in our district, because we don't have like restaurants. There is it's not like we can go like, oh, let's go drive 15 minutes or five minutes. We have to cook. Mm -hmm. A bunch of our like close neighbors, they like either grow like um beef mm -hmm. or like uh they grow a bunch of like what they eat or support like people like us and they get our their products and like meats and eggs from us. Mm -hmm. Ah. So is it very communal? You share with each other in your neighborhood yes yeah we wish it was more communal than it is it's just a matter of of having the time mm -hmm. to be able to do more community-based things and so when you yeah we'll just try and squeeze it in there and um and actually see our name you know like some of your neighbors you don't see them for a month or more and they're like right there but it's just you get locked in and especially for us with two two farms technically Mm -hmm. um we're, we're just we're starting to build a csa for our community just wood valley here okay. and and when we have that we're going to let the neighbors know like this is where you can come pick it up because we're not going to be able to bring it to you although we'd really like to do that mm -hmm. we're just not going to have time so the neighbors are interested you know the csas that andreas put <laughs> together is like eggs and a chicken and now milk and you can use that milk to make butter and so you have like, not just vegetables, it's like anything you can get from the store almost. Wow, you just need some nuts and grains. Then. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fruit, we don't have a lot of fruit yet. Yeah, the that's, the only, yeah. that's the only thing we don't consume a lot that we always like go to Kona or like getting from adaptations is like a tropical fruit. You don't yeah. grow? You don't have you don't have any fruit trees? We do. We, we have do. fruit trees that are young and aren't producing yet um and where our elevation is 2400 feet so we can't grow the really fun stuff like mango and lychee and all that okay. um, so we'll just trade with friends mm -hmm. okay yeah it's kind of beautiful okay because we can grow things that they can't all right so i, I want to go back to the time when you you felt like you wanted to quit and you said that that persistent was there and it came because you were eating good food and that means you had good energy in your brain to have that resolve mm -hmm. um, anything else for anything else that really helped Help you that. yeah that helped you to be able to overcome because as you know farmers got a lot of different challenges and like you said there are a lot of punches right I guess even having each other too, having yeah. a really good, um, you know, somebody to talk to because when he's down, I try to bring him up. When I'm down, he tries to bring me up. Um, and also we have my dad, which he was like really helpful. Yeah, yeah. For advice. Yeah. And it's like how my dad, I, my dad is like me. I'm like, so we're stubborn. <laughs> Andrea's dad. So Andrea's dad lives here with us and, and, it, I always say that he's like three people um, when it comes to working, but he's also very wise and very patient. Um, and so I, I, I wasn't there for a, a lot of conversations. I didn't understand everything Andrea was saying with her dad, but I know that he was very helpful in that during that time um, in helping us stay focused. Like she, he was coaching her and she was coaching me kind of thing. Uh <laughs> Oh, you yeah. had your own wise person. See, everybody needs yeah. their own wise person next to them. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that you guys have each other's for support, not everyone, because loneliness and isolation is a big one now. Yes. For a lot of people in the rural areas, like sometimes even even a couple, it's because it's so vast, they don't see their neighbors and let's say on the mainland and stuff. It's a big deal now in terms of that isolation. Yeah. Or you can be in a room full of people 
and you don't feel connected with anyone. So you feel you have that isolation and loneliness. Wow. Yeah. 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 So to everybody who's listening to this, I know we've said we're really busy a bunch of times, but if you need to talk to someone about, you know, talk to someone specifically who's gone through all that stuff and, and we still were able to get the farm, let us know. Mm-hmm. You know, you can email us um, the name of the company, Ancient Valley Growers. Um, we want we're so enthusiastic about about encouraging not just young people, but anybody to like start growing food. And even if it's just a little bit, if we're all doing it, it eliminates it will eventually eliminate the things like Walmart, um, at least the food that you see in Walmart. Yeah. Um, places like that. We're just flood the flood the system with good food so yeah i mean like yeah let us know but um, matt you're you're a chef so you know how to cook and so is andrea i know i've had her cooking yeah and some people are like i don't know how to cook <laughs> like, yeah. i'll just eat like raw okay. carrots i can't just eat raw carrots <laughs> sure yeah you can but you can't live on it yeah. so there's the youtube university again set if you if you don't know how to cook Mm-hmm. look for someone who does and learn in person is the best way you can watch youtube you can read a cookbook but the cookbook's only as good as it, it doesn't it doesn't teach the unteachable when it comes to cooking you need to be able to feel aspects of it and the only really the best way to do that is to learn from someone in person that can show you like how grandma did it because grandma wrote down recipes but my grandma's recipes were like uh half a handful of this stuff like that ratatouille the kids movie it's it's true what they say anybody can cook Mm -hmm. but you gotta practice like anything yeah so and we love cooking that's the other thing too i know we're in the middle of nowhere but if anyone's on big island and they're like i don't know how to cook and i want to (laughs) learn andrea hosts our the farmers union meetings and we've been talking about doing a cooking class or a series of cooking classes. Oh. And it could be things like um, introductory baking and like how to just sourdough fermenting, make, how to saute, like how to cook a steak. Wow. Everybody's going to want to go live with you now. I want to live with you guys. More trade. Yeah, we need the help. <laughs> Take the help and we're happy to have it host. So, let me ask you, what has been the most challenging experience aside from not, you know, during that period when you were thinking whether you're going to get the farm or not? Was there any other challenging moments in your last seven, 10 years? Mm. That was really tough. Other people. Other people. Well, wow. other difficult people that we've worked, yeah. worked with or worked alongside. Or getting like the right people when we started, like, I guess we kind of like welcome everybody. Like they wanted to work at the farm, but then it we got kind of like okay like you're not you're not really prepared for this kind of like a farm you know like uh, people wants to experience the farming part but they don't really want to do the work so that was like really challenging trying to find the right people to like be at the farm because so, it's what, not so what are the qualities that you need to have to be a farmer good oh. question yeah i mean it's it's um how do i say it it's reasonable to think like of course, I want to come to Hawaii and learn how to farm, but but people don't really think about, despite how much you tell them where we live, we're really far away from everything, it's muddy, it's raining a, a lot here, like people need to eat so we don't stop working if it's raining because mm-hmm. we have people to feed. So uh, people romanticize what it's like to be here, which has made us like expert interviewers now at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the attributes we're looking for, and I'll tell you at least what, for our farm, yeah. What we just started asking everybody first question, it's gonna let us know 80% um if if this is the right fit. Why did you choose our farm? So when we're interviewing people, we ask them why they chose our farm. If they say I really want to travel and and meet new people and stuff, uh stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Um immediately and i'll I'll break hearts now because we just don't have the time I'm like this is not the program you should be in because yeah. this is a farm 
and, mm -hmm. and you want to travel. That's, those are different things. And we're getting a lot of young people saying that. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so what we're looking for is someone who says something like, um, I don't want to, I don't want to hear buzzwords like sustainable and, and, um, Oh, you don't want sustainable. You don't want to have like, no. Okay. I do. No, I want that. We do want that, but it seems like it's just a buzzword now. Yeah. So when people say, um, you know, I, I want to get dirty. Mm -hmm. That's work. Yeah. I like hard work. Like when that's one of the first things that they say, that's, that's what a farmer is. It's just it's just back breaking and it's so rewarding. But also when they say like they want to know where like how where the where their food, food is coming from. from. Mm -hmm. And because of we also in our profile we say like we butcher our own chickens, we milk our own cow, we like, you know, we get a bunch of the stuff from the farm to eat. And that's the first thing they mention. They like they wanna learn. That's like, okay, yeah. So you did read our profile. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But I also like that uh, the qualities for a farmer is like to want to learn and I don't know, to want to learn and be adaptable. Be adaptable, yeah. Because either like either if it's like raining, hot, I gotta go out there and feed the animals. Something's always broken. Yeah. So <laughs> you get all set up to do something and you can't find your pH tester. So how am I supposed to know how to fertilize today? And that's what happened today. So I just had to kind of wing it, but it was, it you know, um, you have to, I guess, roll with the punches is what they say. Yeah. Go with the flow in Hawaii. So do you give them like a little test to see or, you know, like a little kind of trial? Like, uh... yeah. Yeah. Well, so like with work trade programs, people oftentimes are flying from the mainland. So we'll make sure it's a good fit before they come because that's a, they've got to spend money to just to get here and, it's a lot of planning. We go pick them up at the airport. So the test is like, yeah, that first, those first three questions. Mm -hmm. uh, why'd you choose us? Mm -hmm. Do you have any dietary restrictions? So if people are like, yeah, I'm gluten free. We're, we just, I don't know. We're just not really. Well, not so much for as long as they're not free. militaristic about yeah. their, their dietary their diet. restrictions, but yeah. we're, um, so the what was the third one? What was it? Um oh uh to be able um they're not like fresh out of like from their parents to the outside world. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which okay. isn't always bad. It's but sometimes you know they gotta share a kitchen, a bathroom. It's, yeah. So they gotta I have know. like some like what what is it called? Like um Her to to be a, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Especially if they're guys, they gotta know, like you know, to for the toilet. Uh huh. So, yeah. yeah, previous employment. Yeah. Things like that. You get a couple of references. Okay. Um. How about like? Yeah. How about if they're from a program that are is like you know plant pathol you know plant pest management or their tropical plant or you know like mm. they're coming from an agricultural college for instance. Which even you better. Yeah. Oh, you even. Yeah, like where are they? Do you okay. give them her number? <laughs> <laughs> I think we only had like a couple that it had like a previous experience. Yeah. In agriculture. Yeah. Yeah. They were great. And that's never been a requirement of ours. Yeah. And still that's never changed. If you have zero experience, you've never even touched dirt. Mm -hmm. We we're, we love that you would want to come work on a farm, but it has to be for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. So so then that's another important question we ask them where like the cliche question where do you see yourself in five years when people are in their 20s and they don't know really i get it they maybe they shouldn't um know where they're going to see themselves in five years but it's just it all really depends on how they answer the question you know like mm -hmm. you don't have to want to be a farmer or a homesteader but you have to want to understand where your food comes from and why and you have to want to learn why it's important that you know what you're eating and especially to support a, like a local farmer mm -hmm. because it's like um well, uh, remember remember Matisse and Marie like they say like they never gonna see a carrot the same way mm -hmm. 
we had like this couple from France and they were, they're amazing. We love them. Aww. And after doing like carrots, they did like, I don't know, like over 2,000 pounds. 2,000 yeah. pounds during the time we were here. And they were like, we're never going to see the carrot the same way. Like now we know what, like how much it costs, like from seed to like it grows, harvest and washing is so much work. Yeah. So now they, and they never were, they, they didn't come from a, a agriculture background. No, um, but they're kind of, they're not like in the city either, right? They're no, they're, they were in the city. Are they? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So you're saying like appreciation. So the appreciation, yeah. if somebody who knows how to appreciate learning and appreciation, and that seems to be a theme that maybe the public needs to be more aware of. And that's why we're trying to do this podcast too. It's to, for them to, the public to understand like the hard work to takes. Because I hear also like, oh, we're just going to have robots and there's going to be all this, like, it, you know, it's going to, technology uh -huh. is going to take over and we're going to, yeah. so I don't know what, how, what you guys think about that, but this appreciation yeah. for farmers because of all the hard work you put in. Right. Could that, could that help with the mental health issue that we're having? Oh, yeah. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, the robotic farming is is so sterile and, and just not... It's not how human beings should be living. It's not what we should be eating. Um, I'm sure that because that's a, a bit of an inevitability, the robotic, you know, uh, vertical farming indoors with blue light and all that weird, it's just unnatural. Um, I believe that will make people sick, even if it's organic or whatever. We're, we're humans are meant to be covered in bacteria and we have thousands of parasites in our body at all times. And we're supposed to have a symbiotic relationship with, with bacteria and certain parasites, as far as I know, but at least bacteria. So when you have that sterile indoor vegetables, that's not, that'll make you sick eventually. Or just, yeah, no, not give you any nutrients. And, yeah. and and it's just like if if grandma or your mom is cooking for you versus someone slapping something together in, in a fast food chain, like the your touch is putting energy into the food. So so and we teach people that too. If if one of our workers comes to work upset, we have them go look, like handle it before they're planting a seed in the ground. Oh. It, yeah, because it'll it, it'll mm -hmm. it'll be to the detriment of that plant. And, and and we don't want and even if the plant grows maybe it grew with some anger in it and someone's going to eat that and it really does matter it really then that's why plants respond to music and same kind of concept it sounds like you you uh, you both have a very um attuned sensitivity uh, to life maybe because you are living such a you're surrounded by bio like you are living in a mm -hmm. very flourishing place and so you have that attuned sensitivity but let's say many of folks are you know in concrete environment we're sort of we're not as attuned to that sensitivity and they're wondering well i just want convenience i just want to like be able to even if i'm going to grow i'm going to do a little patio or a vertical in my little house and just grow a couple of vegetables and then i'll have my own food because i can't live you know it's, particularly in hawaii when it's so expensive no one's got it's mm -hmm. hard to be able to have a house or to have a piece of land maybe do a cool community gardening but that's the extent of my access to growing in the soil mm -hmm. yeah and that's that's fine i we i've i've thought a lot about that actually there's a podcast that's not really on much any, at all anymore the um sometimes when you tell too much truth you kind of get what's it called not ostracized but you get shut down so it's called the ice age farmer but he really encourages um, growing something inside if you can. And a lot of people who don't have a lot of space can can do uh, like microgreens, mm -hmm. super nutrient dense food that isn't all that expensive when you find the right source for the seed. Or sprouts. And sprouts you yeah, you don't jars. need yeah. 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 soil. Yeah, and you don't even need soil. Yeah, good point. Yeah. And uh, so just the just getting getting your feet wet by starting something like that hopefully that'll get people so excited that they can pursue farming if that's what they really want to do but 
what we've been encouraging because people are, because everything is so expensive is and, and it's e a lot easier said than done but we're kind of getting to the point um with with the economy that we need to hui together and and have a piece of land and just pack it with food and um just learn how to be patient and work with each other because in in hooing up together and starting a, a project like that it's like it's going to take a lot of patience because people are so different mm -hmm. but it's just you know um i don't want to get too political but we we kind of have to do that like everything's so expensive mm -hmm. so if you can make it work like get together with like-minded people and find see if you can get a piece of land and or, or lease some land and just start growing stuff and Oh, what is it called? You can also go with the um the community garden. There is a, like a lot in like in every district. Community gardens. Yes. Yeah. Gardens, yeah. 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 I think that that's we we would really like, and this is like this is going to be something that we're gonna do at, at some point as soon as, as it's reasonable to do. But I want to put in a paintball course on our land for the kids in Pahala is the closest town. So the kids down there, we're you know out in the boonies. They don't have a lot to do. They probably love to come paint, play paintball. Oh. So I'll have a place where they can come do that. But the catch is they have to help me do some farm work first. Oh, okay. So I want to get them while they're young and teach them, look, this is actually kind of cool, that this whole farming thing. And <clears throat> I'll have an area where they can grow something, start to finish, and sell it. Oh. So they'll be able to actually make some money. Okay. And then once they learn, like, it's not that hard. You're a kid, you go to school, and then what are you doing? You're playing video games, screwing around, just make some money. There's not a lot of opportunities to make money out here. Yeah. So we're going to have a place where they can do that. So I'm going to trick them. And then they'll love farming. Because otherwise, they probably would never know how... <laughs> it's not that hard to make some some decent money farming if you know how to do it mm -hmm. you're not going to spend your whole time weeding and spraying and all that stuff if you know how to do it the right way it's not mm -hmm. it's you can make good money oh. there's trees and people farm like it's hard but yeah we're making good money wow. and i just to, i just wanted to mention that like we do the work trade program one because we want to like teach young people uh -huh. uh, and second, because we are we live like uh two hours from the closest town. Oh well, no, one hour, hour, hour an hour, hour, an hour and a half. Um, so there is like really not that many people. We put like advertisements to get like workers, and we only got one worker, and then he never came back. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, we really only ever got one, one person locally. Yeah. Oh. And, and so the work trade program, we're dependent on it. And it's it's so it's global. It can be can anybody France anybody can yeah okay. yeah it's called Woof Willing oh, Workers on okay. Organic Farms Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Please. you okay? <laughs> and you're pleased with that program? Yeah. Yeah. When you know how to interview the, these interested parties, like then it it's totally worth it. Yeah, we get like uh, uh we get mainly like girls that want to like homestead. Women are more adventurous. Yeah. Than oh, I interesting. Oh. Yeah. So you get more female applicants. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. And from from any particular country? No, yeah, mainly I mean, the US. States, yeah. But okay. we get people from around the world. Okay. So yeah. I'm gonna end end our podcast with just one last question. What okay. gives you meaning and purpose in the at the end of the day? Oh man, meaning and purpose. I mean, it's when when I was cooking, it was seeing people in the dining room like licking their plates, mm -hmm. right? Because you just made their food and they really loved it enough that they're like, "Can I get some extra bread so I don't have waste any of this sauce?" So, for me, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, I just got a text message from a friend the other day, an old friend I haven't seen for a while, and he's like, "Hey, glad to see you guys are doing well." And he sent a picture of our eggs that he was buying in a store in Hilo. Oh. So so for for me, mm -hmm. um, it's it's knowing that people are eating something that I put all of my love into. 
Um, and I might, I've never met all the people that are eating our carrots, but I know that they're enjoying them because the adaptation still needs more of them. Wow. Every week. So wonderful. For me, How about yeah. you, Andrea? Oh, man. I, I get it. I, I like that feeling of like people getting like our products. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like I'm my animals. I just, I found that like I have like this this connection with all of my animals I love them I love going out there taking care of them the cows it's Andrea just... discovered what what other people I've heard called equine therapy where you get therapy oh, for yeah. horses yeah. hers I guess would be like bovine oh, therapy. <laughs> Yeah, right. it's just because when I'm with her, I, I have to like nothing like, and then just be present, like oh. all my problems, like it kind of like disappear when I'm in this like area with her inside of the electric fence. And then like, it's just her and I and my dad, there like guiding me and it's just I the feeling is amazing. Sweet. That's so yeah. sweet. Yeah. She's a feisty cow that won't let me anywhere near her. Andre is the only one that can milk her. Really? So oh. Andrea's teaching her that we're we're not scary. Oh. Yeah, is she a rescue cow? Cool. Well, no, so, mm. no, not so much rescue. It's just like she didn't get handled a lot by humans. Yeah, she's a Swiss brown. She's beautiful. But it just it's getting getting around. You gotta handle them when they're young. Yeah. So she's old enough that we got her and her her son, mm -hmm. the baby. So she's old enough that she spent most of her life not being milked by a person. Oh, so it's just yeah. taking some getting used to for her. Yeah. Got to make it worth her while and sweet cob. <laughs> <laughs> so if and if folks want to contact you, want to come visit you or buy products from you, where should they, how would they find you? Uh, ancientvalleygrowers.com. Okay. Ancient or, or Instagram. Yeah. yeah ancient valley growers all one word and then same thing on the instagram and then i don't know do you put like uh links in the description of the I can. podcast we can yeah, yeah that'd be great yes we will do that yeah and if uh, anybody who's hearing this like is interesting in work trade or like you know visiting a farm um you guys are welcome to come to our farm anytime take a tour yeah stay the night yeah we teach a lot more than just how to grow lettuce <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's we're gonna end on that. That sounds lovely. Thank I'll you. Tell you all thank about, you, Andrea. Yeah. We want to thank our guests for their generosity and manao. We also want to thank all our ag producers throughout the islands, and especially those we have heard on the podcast for discussing ways they address the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual dimensions of Hawaii ag production. Each story, each voice contributes to a broader understanding of what it takes to survive and thrive as we feed our communities. Wherever you may find yourself within our island agriculture economies, if you would like to share your story in our podcast, please contact us.